Adam Balls playing just stock John. The got, boogeyman. Yeah, this is definitely. I don't think this is the boogeyman anymore. Yeah, okay. That's this fair. is the underdog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it's very stock. We've got a murder, two ground seals, three bonfires, uh, two abrupt caves, two rector's turn, a slip and a misium orders as the the slots that you can move around. Everything else is very stock uh, with the double arbor elves that um, Reduke and Owen made, you know. Made famous. Popular, yeah, at the Pro Tour. But, uh, yeah, nothing too crazy. I, I don't really see a lot of cards for Cyborg. We're going to definitely want to see one of the Lilianas from the Jun side or a quick Huntmaster to fight these Geists. Yeah, these Geists and these Reckoners, you know, they're obviously both two very, very powerful cards. Two scary cards to be playing against if you're, uh, if you're Adam. Is he's going to take a mulligan down to six here, as is Bronson. Now, this approach to Blue White Red, you know, we've seen Blue White Red kind of go through some iterations right now. We saw last week Jonathan Joe make the finals with a counterspell heavy version that also had a really the war leader to be able to close out games quickly. We've seen versions that have assembled the Legion in, in both the main deck and the sideboard um, to be able to take control that way. You see Bronson has two assembled the Legion in his sideboard. If you're a Blue White Red mage, Brad, I and, I, and, I, and, I, and I know you hang. I know you hang out with a few. Yeah. Um, you know, what approach would you be taking with the Blit Red deck? Are you okay with these eight three drops in the deck? Where you, you know, you're tapping out a little more often? I would mean, you like to be more counter spell heavy? So my problem with blue white red right now is I want to play decks like this when I have a lot of options. You don't have the power level in the cards as the other decks do, but you have a lot more options. So when when you're going down a Geist and Boris Reckoner path like this, what what ends up happening is uh, you you don't get those options. You're forced to play your hand out the way that you draw it. Okay. And that's just not where I want to be with the Sphinx Revelation deck. Um, I, I, I'm not a fan of Blue White Red right now. I think it's a mid-range deck that's worse than John, has worse matchups, really just beats the hyper-aggressive decks that uh, you already get in a lot of other decks out there. Okay. So I, I, I think it's a deck that a lot of people like to play with. They just love attacking with guys, and I've never understood it. I think people just love a blue card, honestly. Love a blue. All the cards are blue now. They all just give you power and no card advantage. The more you play, <laughs> the more cards you have. <laughs> Everything is disguising itself as a blue card. It is. Is Strike Tusk a green card? Nah, not exactly. No. <laughs> no. It's a blue white card. You get two copies and a life. So we're going to see Bronson's going to take a mulligan down to five here. Adam seems happy enough on his six cards. Relax with his pen in his hair. Yep. These decks, of course, two staples of the format. Now, they have moved on to the back burner a little bit here. As you said, Jun was kind of at its dominance, or at its peak, around uh, around Pro Tour Montreal. Yeah. Uh, you know, a week before that, maybe the week after. I think uh, the, the the Grand Prix, too. I think th that was like when Jun was at its best. Uh, yeah. The Blitz GP, I, I don't remember where it was. Quebec, uh, Quebec City. City. Quebec City, yeah. City, yeah. Uh, and the biggest reason that we're seeing J uh, Jun fall down is not just because it has a bad uh, junk matchup, it's because the format is very polarized right now. Okay. You have the reanimator deck in junk, you have the tap out control deck or the slow control deck in Esper, and you have Naya Blitz and Jun Agro on the hyper aggressive. And Jun cannot conform in 75 cards to beat all three. So you're gonna have to sacrifice one of those matchups. So you're saying they should play like 85 cards? Yes, yeah. that's exactly what I'm Maybe saying. Maybe a little bit of a bigger main deck to be yes. able to handle all these problems. And potentially be able to sideboard into battle. Alert. You can do that, right? <laughs> Only if you ask nice. <laughs> as Bronson is going to roll out five cards here, certainly by no means this match over, as Jund is not a deck that kills you incredibly quickly. It does have a lot of powerful cards, but well, it can it, draw the wrong half of its deck, It too. ones for ones you into the ground, so as long as... Uh, the only real thing that Bronson needs is a Geist and no answer from Adam. And then Bronson just has to use those spells to effectively just use everything to get the damage through with the Geist. But if we see a, a Liliana from Adam, this, this match is over. Adam, Unless, looking, Adam looking deep into Bronson's eyes, daring him to mulligan again. He's <laughs> just praying for, Go ahead. For, for. I dare you. <laughs> Bronson can't stand to look at Adam right now. Looking deep into those five cards, wondering, can I keep them? Should I mulligan? Down to four he goes. Ooh, this, this is not how he became Grand Prix Lincoln champion. I, well, do you remember the deck he was playing? It was Loam, right? I it bet was. he did this. Yeah, I guess he could have mulliganed <laughs> yeah. a little bit with that deck, yeah. <laughs> that probably doesn't mulligan so bad. Oh, no, it's really great. Life from the Loam is a hell of a magic card. Also One another, of my favorites. Also another green card that is not a that is not that a green That is definitely card. not a green card. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite cards. The green cards that disguise themselves as blue cards. I mean, those the only, only ones good like. ones ever. Like, yeah, those are the only ones that I like personally. Well, green definitely did not get uh, 
the raw abilities right when the game was introduced. Uh, they were like, all right, big green monsters. I mean, before the invention of Tempo, green must have been really good. Before people realized about playing a good curve and... Yeah, you know, like your, your basic fundamentals of magic. Yeah. It was Force of Nature time. Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember that's, that's the first thing that I lost to. It was like Elemental Champion. I don't even know. It was a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. It was a big walking tree folk. It's from 7th edition. <laughs> Burden Force? No, maybe. I, maybe, I don't know. It didn't make tokens. All right, so we're going to shock ourselves to Thought Scour. And Adam's passing with another lamb. All right, so Thought Scar's going to turn on Azori's Charm, Boris Ragnar. Bronson's going to draw a Supreme Verdict off of that. Draws another card, and you see a Hollow Fountain to draw. So you see a couple of lands here. You don't see the Geister, you don't yeah, see a Boros have... Reckoner. You just see a couple of spells that I can cycle. Yeah, we have a Boros Charm, an Azori's Charm to cycle, and a Supreme Verdict. Not exactly what you want, but we do not have a Liliana. Adam does pay the Liliana. Azori's Charm is going to cycle. You see Unsummon drawn for the turn. Hollow Fountain coming to play tap and does just pass the turn back. Adam Bronson did not get the memo that Unsummon does not beat Thrag Test. Adam without a fourth land. Ooh. Now we might have a new magic here. As Bronson's going to draw a card, he draws his Sphinx's Revelation, not you. Adam draws a Garuk Primal Hunter. So here we go. Boros, Boros Reckoner, Reckoner. pass the turn back. Does Adam draw the land? He draws a Farseek, so he kind of right. draws a land. It's okay. But this is the time that Bronson needed. Yeah, he needs to capitalize right now. You're going to see Adam search out a Blood Crypt here. He's going to fix his mana, be able to search. He does have the triple green necessary for Garrick if yep. you ever do get to that point. But Adam has a hand full of four and five drops with a Thrag Tusk, Olivia, Huntmaster of the Fels, and Garrick over there. And no removal to take care of Boros Reckoner right now. So in for three. And is it Geist time? It is, it is Geist, Geist time. time. Oh, with, with a Boros Charm and an Unsummon in hand, this mold of four is going to get there. So let's see what Adam chooses. He draws an Arbor Elf for the turn. You see his hand of Huntmaster of the Fells. He has a Livy. He does not have a fifth land for Thrag Tusk to be able to stabilize right now. Yeah, he definitely needed that land to hit the Thrag Tusk uh, because this, this Huntmaster is not going to get the job done. So here comes Huntmaster of the Fells. Going to gain Adam 2. Going to get him a Wolf token. Bronson's going to draw a card. He draws a Glacial Fortress. Now he does have four lands. He can quote unquote cycle that Sphinx's Revelation, but we are going to start here with an attack, with the gang, you see the angel token come into play. Here is the Huntmaster test and a fail from Adam Boyles. This is the, the old Huntmaster test where you had to put both in front because you get unsummoned. So unsummoned is going to take care of the wolf token. Bronson's going to come across for seven damage total. And he has played the spell, so Huntmaster's not going to flip. So Adam's going to draw a card. It's going to need to be a land here, Brad, and it is it's a land. Cemetery. Okay, so the game still goes on. We just have uh, a, a Boros Charm to deal with... Uh, deal two, two attacks with Geist. So Adam resigned to his fate says, eh, I guess I'll cast Thrag Tusk if you don't have a counter spell. And Bronson says, I don't have one. So up to 17, Adam is going to go. It's going to help stabilize his board. Bronson going to draw a card. He draws a Sulphur Falls. So we're getting a little bit closer to having since Revelation become a magic card again. Yeah. And so now here comes the Geist, the Angel, and the Boros Reckoner again. All right, so Thrag Tusk in front of Geist. So this is seven... So he has the ability to deal 13 damage right now. Um, oh, sorry, excuse me, 11. But is he going to just want to Boros Charm to uh, give his team indestructibility? This also makes the Huntmaster not flip. And, all right, yeah. This allows him to get one more hit in with that Geist, but another Thrag Test is just going to, oh, what, just? Oh, we see Double Strike is the choice. Just to get that Thrag Test off the board, wow. I mean, Double Strike takes care of the Thrag Tusk, also does do a lot of damage opening him up. So, up yeah, to Bronze is going to... Snapcaster Mage, maybe. Right. So he wants to slow down. I don't like slowing down against a fistful of cards against Jund. But with the, with that, he's going to try to Wrath, get the boards cleared up, and get that Sphinx's Revelation online. Yeah, maybe catch up with cards that way. And you're going to see Ravager of the Fells and the Beast Token... Or, excuse me, Huntmaster of the Fells and the Beast Token come across here. So Bronson's is going to take a draw step, and now he's going to have to go in back. He's going to kind of have to turtle up a little bit. Or attack with the Boros Reckoner. If, yeah. Too bad we didn't have that, that Boros Charm. We could have gotten infinite. Do you think he's just going to Sphinx for... So if he Sphinxes for two, he can either try to find a Snapcaster Mage or another Boros Charm to try to go infinite? Is that a potential play, Cedric? Yeah, well, we do see Sphinxes for two, and I definitely think that's a line right now. And I'm only going to four. 
Desperate times call for desperate measures. You see, Mizzy and Mortars and Sulfur falls are the draws. He does just pass the turn back here. I think I would have personally preferred maybe the Sphinxes before attacking, so I have more information to work with there, because he does draw the Sulfur Falls, so he could have maybe attacked and given first strike or played yeah. defense with first strike. But either way, you see Bronson start here. Adam is going to untap and draw. And yeah. So you see him sliding his creatures around. Maybe Thrag Tusk is going to come across here. But I think most importantly, Brad, is that the window is now open for Garrett Primal Hunter to hit play, or he can even take a turn off and cast Slaughter Days. Yeah, I don't think you want to take a turn off right now. I don't know what you're really afraid of with this much of a board presence. Uh, I guess when you're inside the game, you are just deathly afraid of Revelation taking over. But outside, I, I don't think the card is going to do enough with, with that many permanents on the board. No removal spell for... Yeah. So here we're going to see the Garrick. You're going to see uh, what's likely going to be... Okay, he's going to... You can't go to one. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> so that die is going to have to go up to four. We're going to Beast Token out there for you guys and get that die correct for you as well. Because one thing that card cannot do is go to one. And there's our Beast Token. You just you just do it all, don't you? It's the hey, magic. I do a lot in the booth. <laughs> I can make it happen. All right, so seven seven lands now for Bronson, and we're going to see. Is this another Sphinx's Revelation? What is this? I can't see a Mizium Mortar. He's gonna need one more Kick, mana for yeah, that. Yeah, he's gonna need. Yeah, that's six. That card would be that card would be way too good if it costs five. It would be pretty good. So you're gonna see that clear up a lot of stuff here. It's gonna leave Bronson with a Beast Token, and we're probably gonna see him. Uh, we're probably gonna see. Or sorry, he's going to leave Adam with a Beast Token. You're going to see Bronson attack with a Reckoner. Maybe try to get in a Garrick here. Yeah. Time is ticking down, so the Infinite Life would just end up being a draw for Bronson. Sure. So he does need to find some way to deal 12 damage. Adam's all in on Planeswalkers, and now the Olivia can hit play. Olivia is not the greatest answer to a Boris Reckoner, but you do get to steal it at the cost of one life and seven mana. How about a bonfire of the dam? What do you think about that? Oh, just to kill you, yeah. yeah. just to take care of him. The All last right. two are dealt via bonfire, and you see Bronson shows his hand of Sphinx of Revelation, Azorius Charm, and just not enough time to get all those cards out of his hand. So you will see Adam Bowles. Well, that wasn't two to one. satisfying. I wanted to see the Mold of Four get we there. We almost saw the Mold of Four get there. He wins 2-1 to one over Bronson Magnum, Grand Prix Lincoln Champion. Yeah. Playing Blue, White, Red, Geist, and Reckonance. Well, that, that is a deck that I did not think I was going to see this early in, in the day as a Geist strategy. No? Pretty nice. No, I mean, I, I, I don't see it on Moto. It doesn't exist in Moto because Blitz has taken over. Okay. That's usually where I play. But, yeah, I haven't played against a Geist in about a month. Maybe two. That's not so bad. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, I, I hate playing against Geist. I'm, I'm stress, sick so. of it, yeah. Yeah, I would, not be, I would not be complaining too much about that at all. After spending an entire year building strategies to beat Geist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah trying to beat Delver and Geist and all yeah. those guys. Yeah, it's not so bad to see Geist kind of become a little more obsolete nowadays. For sure. I can't be unhappy about that at all. So we'll see. We've seen in our future matches so far. We saw Lewis Laskin win with Pedal of the Metal defeating Junker Animator, a deck that we're going to see plenty of in the next really, 48 hours. I really like his list, though, uh, of his Pedal of the Metal. And the thing that screwed me